You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, advances in pain management. With us, we have the desert's leader in pain management, Dr. Roland Reinhardt. Dr. Reinhardt, welcome Thanks. to the program. Thanks for having me. Now, you are the go-to guy in the desert. That's what they say oh. about you. <laughs> is that, is that now, what you've they been say? there over 25 years, right? Well, I've been there, yeah. And that's Since all you 91. do is pain. Exactly, exactly. So it's great because, you know, previously I uh, used to do pain and, and anesthesia. That was my background. And, uh, and now I just do exclusively pain, which, which uh, actually it's a much more exciting field to be in. I mean, anesthesia is nice. You put people to sleep. But now you get to help people with their pain while they're still awake. Is that, and people that call that are in pain, you do take same-day appointments. Oh, we do. Is that we right? Do. If you have horrible pain, if you just call and say, you know, I've had pain for 40 years and I'd like to see somebody, well, well we may wait a well, little Well, you bit. just tipped them off. Now but everybody's going to call your office saying, I'm in excruciating pain. Oh, that might be. Okay. Oh, but you do see people in the same we day. We do. We see a number. We probably every day have about five patients we add on, maybe, maybe more, uh, that call that say, hey, I'm in horrible pain. I need something done. Okay. Absolutely. So for people that don't know your practice, and, and we're talking about the, really the newest uh, thing in pain management right now. Right. I mean, it's really brand new. I mean, it's like breaking right. the news here today. But for, but let's talk about everything you do first. Like, what sure. are some of the things you do and what are some of the conditions you treat? Sure, so we treat you know, a wide variety of conditions, uh, arthritis, uh, cancer, um, aches and pains, sprains. Um, we do uh, a number of things, for, you know, migraine headaches. Um, but uh, probably a lot of the things that we have out in the desert are, are people involved with athletes. You know, the desert is, uh, is generally speaking, you know, they're a bunch of active people. So they're playing golf or tennis or whatnot. Like 70, 80 years old, oh, 90 absolutely. years old playing absolutely. golf. Absolutely. You know, the other day I, I, was, I was happy my mother was turning 90 and that patient came in and I was telling her how my mom was 90. She says, oh, that's wonderful. When I turned 90, you know, she's, she goes, I'm 92. And it was wonderful. The party I had when I was 90, the next guy was 95. So there's a lot of active people. Nice. And as we live longer, a lot of, you know, things wear out. So, so uh, you know, people, golfers, tennis players, whatever, or just people, you know, with wear and tear over time may need, uh, may need more health services as we, as we live longer. And pain is unfortunately part of life that's, that's going to come oftentimes with with living longer. Okay. Now we've had you on the program talking about electronic stimulators, the next Correct. generation Correct. for people Absolutely. that want to get off medication Absolutely. and control their pain. Now this newest thing like Vertiflex or the mild procedure on the phone we were talking, you, you're pretty excited about it. You know, this it's an exciting time. I mean, it's really some great things that we can do for people with, you know, minimally invasive techniques to actually help control their pain and to make a change, an anatomical change. So things like the stimulator, you know, the upside for that is we weren't cutting in we, into their body, we weren't taking parts out of their body, we weren't doing anything to, to uh, address that. We were basically able to successfully block their pain, but uh, now with, with these new techniques, we're able to, in a minimally invasive way, um, take out um, pieces of tissue uh, or expand the area around nerves to where they'll get relief from pain, and it's actually an anatomical change that actually then holds up for longer than maybe an epidural. I mean, epidurals are great, been around a long time. They work about maybe 75% of the time for a lot of patients. But for some people, you get an epidural, you get some relief, you get another epidural, you get some relief, but it never really gives you kind of the long-lasting relief that you're looking for. So these new techniques, one of which is mild, which basically thins out the ligament in the spinal canal, which opens the canal a little bit, relieving the pressure on the nerves, can give you excellent relief. Okay. Um, the other technique called the Vertiflex is insertion of this, of this is, is so smart, this, this little titanium device that spreads the bone apart and just frees up the nerves a little bit, gets rid of any uh, pressure on the nerves uh, from stenosis, uh, and actually can help improve patient's pain dramatically. Okay, now, you showed me in our green room a spine and what it's doing. I've seen a video about this that we're gonna show a little bit yeah. later. Okay. It really helps uh, help me understand what this is, but most of the pain, like leg pain, back pain, is something is pinching or pushing against the nerve. Right. Right. So most surgeries are, are performed to remove that pressure on the nerve. Exactly. Is that so, right? So, so this is, so now 
This right. is so, what? so specifically, this is indicated for what's called neurogenic claudication. And what neurogenic claudication is, is it pain when you're standing or walking. Because when we stand, we basically, you know, bring your hips forward, put a little curve in your back. When you do that, it closes the space around the nerves, and that may put pressure on the nerves, okay? And that's why these people get pain. So if you're, you know, the kind of person who's, you know, walking a certain distance and you find you start leaning forward, or if you go to the grocery market. So you lean forward, market, it relieves the pain Right, because bit. it opens it up. So these people, you know, otherwise they're looking for a chair to sit in, okay? Or they go to the grocery store and they're leaning on the grocery cart, okay? So um, in those cases, when they're having pain down the leg, uh, related to standing upright or walking upright, these are the people who, where this therapy is this ideal new for. VertiFlex. VertiFlex and mild. Both of these procedures okay. are helpful with that. So people that get relief from their pain, either sitting, maybe with their legs up, or bending forward. Bending forward, right? This is, is this spinal stenosis? Spinal is that what stenosis, that is? exactly. So, okay. so mild. And define that. What is spinal stenosis? So stenosis just means narrowing, right? If we if we okay. just if we just said you had spinal narrowing, you know, as a doctor we couldn't charge much. So we call it stenosis. <laughs> okay? okay. So so spinal stenosis is just narrowing, and there can be a number of different reasons for it. One would be you have a bulging disc. One would be there's a ligament thickened up. Another would be that you have arthritis. Those are the three big ones. There's a couple others. Your spine could be out of place. That is, you might have slippage of the bones themselves, uh, or you could have a cyst in the spinal canal. But the big three are basically a bulging disc, um, uh, narrowing because of arthritis or thickening of the ligament. That are pushing against the nerve. Correct, okay. narrowing the space. There. So the current options are what, and what are you doing now with this new technology? Right, so so typically the, the standard sort of continuum you'd go with is you, you do an epidural, you know, maybe they do physical therapy, they do chiropractic care. So for the patients who have you know, back pain that's just not going away, okay? You know, a lot of times it may just go away over a few weeks or whatever, but if it's if it's just persistent, then the continuum would be, you know, they'll do some physical therapy, then they may take some anti-inflammatories, Advil leave, maybe they have chiropractic care or whatnot, <clears throat> and then uh, we may look at doing an epidural steroid injection for the patient, right? That'll help take down swelling and inflammation, but doesn't really change the anatomy. But oftentimes getting the pressure off the nerves just from the steroids will help to alleviate the pain. So oftentimes you can take steroids or, or have an epidural steroid injection, and that may alleviate the pain. Sometimes though, you may get relief for oh, a few weeks or whatnot, but it doesn't really hold up for you over the long haul. Then the option you know, we're looking at is, wow, are they gonna need surgery because we can't do anything else to get rid of their pain? Like the epidurals over time stop working because it's something is pinching may, that may, nerve or correct, pushing against it? Correct, there may be progression of what's okay. going on, either the ligaments getting thicker or arthritis worse or bulging disc or whatnot. So, uh, you know, the question is, are they, you know, in the old days, I mean, old, old days, the option was, well, you go to surgery. If nothing else is helping, you go to surgery. But these people often may just have moderate spinal stenosis. And so, you know, to go to surgery, to just do a small thing for them, seemed like an awful big leap to all of a sudden, now you're going to invade the body, cut out bone, cut out ligament, cut out disc. So these newer procedures now, which actually, you know, I think are going to revolutionize medicine, much, much like how there's very little cardiac surgery done these days. You know, now it's all done, you know, by cardiologists with catheters and tubes and they dilate things. So likewise, pain management is going to, I think, revolutionize a lot of spine surgery to where people may be able to get relief from these, you know, less invasive techniques and have just as good of outcomes. So the first one, the mild procedure, essentially focuses on one problem, which is when the ligament is too thick and if that's causing pressure on the nerves. So the mild procedure goes in and essentially you sequentially just remove little bits of the ligament to just open the spinal canal a small amount, but that may be enough to alleviate pain. So you go in and under scope and you're shaving, shaving the, ligament the ligament right. that's in front of the nerves to give more space so they don't have the pain. Yeah, that it's, kind a, of? it's a ligament at the back of the spine. Back of the spine, okay. At the back of the spine that basically has crowded in over time because of degeneration of the disc. And so um, when, when the ligament's too thick, it's taking up space in the canal. And so you can go in and you can shave that out and actually just increase the space there. Oftentimes I've had patients with you know, ligaments that might be seven, eight millimeters thick. You resect that down to two millimeters. You just added six millimeters to the epidural space. So you know, all the patients we have, and interestingly, the mild was um, approved by Medicare 
done a lot, then Medicare pulled it back and wanted to have it restudied. We were part of 15 centers that did the restudy, okay. and the only way people could get it was to, to basically be involved in a study. And all the patients that we treated in that, all of them had significant improvement in their ability to walk, uh, stand, um, and basically improvement in their daily activities. So this is just the newest in minimally invasive spine surgery in a way. Correct. Right? Okay. Correct. And, and it is in some respects. It's been around for probably four or five years. Um, again, because you know there was this re-study and Medicare, you know, said we're only going to uh, have people involved in the study. And again, we are one of 15 centers in the country that did this throughout the study period. And so the results we had really were people who, um, you know, dramatically had improvement in their ability to stand and walk. Um, two of them I can think of it. And uh, interestingly, uh, they, were, they seemed to be more of the overweight patients. One of of whom was like not a candidate at all for surgery. And uh, these people had their, their time that they could stand was maybe five minutes. It was very restricted. You know, life sort of occurs in 15 minute increments. In 15 okay. minutes you can get up, make a sandwich, you know, you can, you know, go to the bathroom, whatever. But when you're, when you're you know, you can only stand for five minutes or so, you're not gonna do much in life. So these people, their ability to walk further, their ability to stand was uh, increased probably sixfold. So, uh, you know, it's a dramatic difference in improvement in their life. You know, I, I don't think I understood this concept until today. That So everything when treating back pain, especially if, it, if it's coming from the nerve, that it's, it's, it's to try to push your tissues, your body away from that nerve. Is yeah. that right? Well, it's to, it's to open up the space. So, so that you know, way the nerve is not pressed on or irritated or rubbed. Exactly. So surgery, surgery, the first part of surgery is always, you know, if you're going to have surgery, it's called decompression. So the problem is that there's too much pressure on the nerves, kind of like a pressure cooker. And so with being squeezed by the anatomy. Correct. Or, okay. Correct. So what you're trying to do is open the space and just free up the pressure on the nerves, get the pressure off the nerves. All right. So the newest, most really exciting and revolutionary thing going on now is this, this new, this new uh, technique or procedure with uh, Vertiflex. And what Vertiflex does, uh, I don't know, I showed you a video. Yeah, so we'll go to the video in, in just a moment. But again, who's the ideal candidate for this newest procedure, this Vertiflex? Right. So the best patients, again, the, the indication is for what's called neurogenic claudication, which is people when they're standing or walking, you know, are having pain, and so they tend to bend forward. Or, you know, you may also notice that they go to sit down, okay, which also opens the spine. Or you'll see them often, you know, leaning on the shopping cart at the at the grocery store, which, you know, where we live is like half of the people. So you could spot these people that are that you could tell are, are getting pain relief from moving forward? Absolutely. Because it opens Absolutely. up the spine. Absolutely. And the patients know that. I mean, I had, a, I had a gal in just yesterday. She described perfectly exactly that. She can be up about 10 minutes and then she's looking to sit down. She says if she goes to the grocery store, she can lean on the cart and walk through the whole store with no problem. So, you know, the difference is when you, again, when you lean forward, it opens the space around the nerves. When we stand up straight because we, we, you know, put our hips forward and we put a curve in our back, we start putting pressure on those nerves. So wow. what's great about this Vertiflex is it basically holds the, the bones apart, leaving more room for the nerve, just like you would if you were sitting. So even though you're standing, those segments of the spine are kept from closing down and that alleviates, alleviates the pressure on the nerves. Okay, now let's go to this video. And I, I, I'm gonna tell you, anybody watching this, this is like one of the best animated videos I've ever seen. I mean, it's excellent. really, it, it helps you really understand this. Uh, so, so let's go to the video. This simple procedure is done through a small incision made in your lower back. The superion implant is placed between the vertebrae and holds them open. This relieves pressure on the nerves in the spinal canal. When the superion is placed, the device arms are opened and surround the spinous process. This helps in preventing the potential of the superion from dislodgement. After the procedure, you may enjoy significant reduction in leg pain within the first few days. Your doctor will review post-operative care guidelines with you. This will let you know how to care for the surgical site after the procedure. Your doctor will also talk to you about limiting your activity levels immediately after the procedure and how to increase activities as you heal. Certain risks are associated with the use of the Superion. Consult your doctor for full information regarding these risks. If you have been living with leg pain from moderate lumbar spinal stenosis, you know the toll it can take on your day-to-day -day life. 
Superion is a new medical treatment that may allow you to have a more active future. Start enjoying your day-to-day -day life again. Wow, I mean, it looks pretty easy. So you implant that at your center. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. So the great thing about this is it can be done in an outpatient surgical center. You can do it in the hospital as well. It's a lot less expensive to do it in a surgical center. Um, and so um, the, uh, the patient has minimal uh, anesthesia. It can be done almost with just local anesthesia or very light. So sedation. you're just kind of clamping it open a little bit. We're I mean, just opening it up. Exactly. Like That's... mimicking what they feel like when they're sitting down. Exactly. Or, I mean, or, I'm sorry, or leaning forward. Actually, it's, it's, it's really, Brilliant. I mean, it's so simple. You know, in life, there's some things that are just like okay. so simple. It's just like brilliant. So it's, uh, you know, the great thing is uh, over a six year study, uh, very good improvement in pain. About 80% 80, 80 of patients, even at six years out, have relief of their pain. There are some patients it doesn't work for, but by and large, um, uh, the patients, again, it's patient selection, it's getting the right so patients. So you can spot this on imaging. You can Absolutely. say, wow, this would probably be good. Right, so we're gonna get an MRI and we're also gonna take x-rays of them bending forward, standing up straight and bending backwards because we wanna make sure there's no instability in the spine where the bones might be moving around. Again, you know, the nice thing about this, we're not even invading into the spinal canal. We're actually placing this in the back of the bones, you know, where the, again, as the video demonstrated. Like the bumpy parts on the back of your back. Right. and as kinda, it, yeah, putting other, it in what's there. It's called the spinous process, right? All right. So as a video showed where, you know, it's clamped on the back. So we're not actually even cutting into the spine. If for some reason, you know, you had continued progression of disease, you know, uh, this kept bulging, whatever, and you had to have surgery, we're not invading any part of the surgical space where the surgeon's going to go. So the great thing is you can put this in. It's, it's simple to put in. The patient doesn't need sedation for it. There's minimal downtime. Uh, after the procedure, you know, we'll have them just limit how much they're bending and, and twisting and whatnot. Um, but it's got very limited recovery time. Nothing like having spine surgery. So the person that had to bend forward to relieve their pain or sit down and put their legs up to relieve pain, this gives them the same relief. This device is essentially holding those segments of the spine open just the same as if they how were bending. It took so long for them to figure this out. You know, it, it's great. Because you say it's an ingenious. It, re it really is. And I, I think, you know, uh, like a lot of things, I mean, open heart surgery got to be, you know, you're bypassing more and more vessels. And finally, you're kind of going, you know, do we really need to be doing that much? When you saw this, because look, when you look at the video, it looks very simplistic. Did you think, why did I think of this? Yeah. Yeah. Well, don't I wish. How about Velcro, too? Yeah. 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 But yeah. I mean, is it one it of those is. things in your industry where you're saying, wow, this is really it really is. Well, I'm, okay. I'm sure people come up with you know, clever ideas all the time and then you just kind of think, well, you know, whatever. But, but uh, actually this product, I think, is going to help so many, many people. And in particular, people who you have epidurals. I mean, I see this in my practice. Yeah, we'll give me a scenario epidurals. of who would really yeah. benefit from this. Yeah, so we have a lot of, well, we have a number of patients that, um, you know, we've given epidurals for. And I always feel bad if they say, well, I had an epidural, you know, a year ago or whatever. And, you know, I just kind of still had pain. It didn't really help. So, so I just stayed home and maybe their primary care doctor gave them some pain medicines or something. And, and I feel bad for them. I'm like, well, why didn't you come back? I mean, there's other things we can do for you. And now we so have something. So epidural is just the starting place. Yeah, epidurals may, may But if it keeps wearing you. off fast, then you could do something else about it. Exactly. That's exactly. where you say you feel sorry for them. Exactly. And, it, and it's something that's much less than, than having to do surgery. You know, people who have a, a surgery have a laminectomy. Uh, the... the uh, Reoperation rate within two years is anywhere from about six to thirty-four percent. So you know, I see that all the time, and I, I will admit, you know, my view of surgery is somewhat tainted. And I, and I will say, if you need surgery, you need surgery. So so you know, don't don't, don't think now that this, just this I'm saying you can avoid it. Uh, you know, I learned the name about an hour ago from you. Right. But this is where they cut the bone. To cut away the bone to take the pressure off the the nerve. Right. And so what? But the, then you're messing around with the. Sp the anat I mean, you're with the physiology of the person, and you could potentially make the spine weaker. Well, you're I taking think you out kind of implied. right. I mean, if you think about it, the bony the bony part of the spine is there to support the nervous the nervous system, the spinal cord. Okay, so if you start taking out a lot of that bone, then you may have to go in and do a fusion to stabilize it. It'd be Eventually. Like Exactly. Well, maybe eventually, or maybe the first time you go in, maybe okay. you do a fusion. Because the natural history, I mean, the surgeons know, the natural history is, is that there's going to be deterioration. So if By you removing just, that little bone. If you just take out the bone, 
the patient may have symptoms come back again. So the people who are doing, you know, minimally invasive kind of procedures, and you can get that done by, you know, a number of surgeons. Uh, there's one company that advertised a lot, but a lot of surgeons will do those minimally invasive procedures. They will recognize and they will tell the patient, look, we're just going to fix this one thing. There's other things that may happen. So when you do, when you do uh, less procedure, but you're still taking out bone, you're still taking out disc, you're still structurally adjusting that, that space then you may have a chance that other things are going to deteriorate, okay? So with this device, we're not cutting anything out. We're basically just supporting the structure that's there. Like scaffolding in a, in a way, way or some kind of a... Could be, yeah, it's precisely like that. We're holding it open so that the pressure's not on the nerve. And how long could it last? So, so far the studies go out to six years. And really? With, with the same kind of results in terms of relief, particularly leg pain, about 80%. And additionally, while leg pain was the primary thing we're, we were looking for to try to get the pressure off the nerves and that would give you pain down the leg. Additionally though, people with back pain, there's about 68% or so people out five years still have relief of back pain as well. So the primary thing was the legs, again, 80, 80, 85% or so relief of pain uh, in the legs after five years, but also back pain, about 60, 65% of people at five years or have improved back pain. So this is great for uh, leg pain, like sciatica. That would be the primary thing, right. And you get, you know, I wanna show a little bit of that clip one more time for people that are just tuning in. We're talking about the newest uh, implantable device to, I guess, relieve pressure that's caused from something uh, Pinching the nerve, right? Or, or going in, that's from, what stenosis from any reason whatsoever. Yeah. Okay, whether it's a disc or arthritis or whatever. So what we're looking at here, you you just do the procedure, implant that little. That's Correct. what we're looking at. Correct. Just implant it in. It opens it up. Right, and it's a very simple procedure to do. Done again with just for the most part local, little bit of sedation. You know, very different. You know, even with the the smallest laminectomy, they're going to put you to sleep. Even the smallest minimally invasive surgery, they're going to put you to sleep. This doesn't require for you to be put to sleep. So people who you know are too debilitated, maybe maybe they have other health conditions, okay. they could still have this procedure. And I think those are a lot of those people who you know are sitting at home going, well, there's nothing that can be done. The surgeon told me nothing can be done. Well, you know what? Something can be done. And people don't want surgery. Period. People right? generally don't. They well, put it off and put it off, and they're living in pain. This is one of those non-surgical. I mean, it's surgical because you're, but you're not touching their spine. I mean, you're not well, carving anything away. You're not. Doing Correct. Anything, right? We're on the spinal canal. It's just sort of like we're just providing support in a way that basically provides a better opening for for the nerves uh, as they exit the spine and keeps the pressure off the nerves. And uh, and how soon before they feel relief? Because it seems like it'd be immediate. Yeah. Just like when you lean forward to relieve your back pain. Is that you the may, way it is you, with this? Exactly, exactly. So, so you will have an improvement right away because it is kept open. There are some patients who will have some back pain. In our experience, the patients we've had, some of them, about 6%, have some back pain temporarily uh, after you put in the device. Again, you're putting a device up against the bone and bone has some nerve endings. But typically that resolves within a very short time. Uh, and so it's really, it's, I think it's really, a, I won't say a miracle, but, but pretty close okay. to that in terms of, you know, what are your options? You know, with the options where you had shots, okay, can't, can't keep having shots. What are you gonna do, take narcotics? Okay, well, now there's the problem with addiction and so on. Okay, well, you're gonna go to surgery. So now in between, you know, just having the shots and having surgery is this incredible device that just, that just uh, really is a wonderful opportunity for people to get pain relief without having to take medication. It, lo it looks easy to do. You showed me on a model using the exact tools right in our green yeah. room. You did it right, you stumbled a couple of times, but, <laughs> but uh, well, because you were on a book. And you, it was but, a little hard. But yeah. it was pretty easy, you just put it in, and, and it's there, you come out, and that's it's, it. It's, no downtime at all, is that right? It's a simple procedure. Downtime would be, you know, I would say no downtime. Uh, you just want them to take it some easy. Limita yeah, we don't, we don't want people, you know, going out doing, uh, you know, skydiving. And what is that or, called, by the way? What is it? So when they ask for this, when they call your office, what is this called? It's called Vertiflex. Vertiflex. Vertiflex is a product that's made by Superion. I should mention, I, I, I've got some stats here I dug up about you, but is this true that you're one of about less than 1% of all pain guys that are even doing this procedure? There's about 450 or so physicians in the country that were selected? do this procedure. Yeah, I felt actually really uh, a privilege to do that, so yeah. A year from now, you come back on the program and you've done a lot of these. Yeah. 
hundreds. You're going to have store after store after store. Is that your prediction? I will. That, that I will. This will be the best thing you do, you think? Like this the newest is gonna best be, thing? This is going to be the best thing in terms of giving people consistent relief over a long period of time and something much better than than just doing an epidural. Okay. I mean, we'll do epidurals, we'll see if they get better, great. But if they okay. don't, we now have something, another option for them that will allow them to get uh, good relief of their pain, again, from neurogenic uh, neurogenic claudication. So it's a great option. And, and, and you work with the, with, with, with the orthopedic or the spine surgeons in town, so if, if they're not a candidate, you're gonna send them for surgery. Because you told me clearly in the green room, that if they need surgery, you're gonna. Oh, absolutely. You know, if there, there's a, there's a clear indication for this. It it fits in a very clear space. I think a lot of people are going to find that that you know this is not. Firstly, this is an option they never had before. So so now you have this option, and I think a lot of people who either stayed at home and said I'm just gonna put up with the pain or taking narcotics. Uh, as opposed to having surgery, okay. or those people going to surgery now have an option to say, hey, you know what, I'll have something less than, than a major spine surgery. So it's a wonderful option. But you know, the problem with all these procedures, like even with you know, back surgery, is there, you gotta redo it all the time. Is that the case with this? Yeah, well, so, so for this procedure, which again, a minimally invasive, people that may have to go to operation, okay, or re-operation, whatever, and uh, the statistics show that in two years, about 14% go to re-operation. Laminectomies, anywhere from six to 35% uh, of people have to go have re-operation. Again, you know, if you look at people who have to get re-hospitalized for, um, uh, for complications from laminectomy, you know, standard laminectomy, that's about 9% uh, incidence in a two-year study of this was zero. Uh, causes for uh, stroke or heart problems, wound complications, neural injury, about 2.5% for standard surgery, uh, wound complications, 3%, uh, heart or stroke problems, about 3%. All those with a, a standard laminectomy, uh, again, because you're having major anesthesia, you're having a lot more done with this, zero. We have about 30, 30 seconds, but what are the spine surgeons or the orthopedic surgeons saying about this new procedure? Yeah, so I showed this to, to a neurosurgeon and they thought it was actually incredible. And the nice thing about it is that it's not really, you know, this, the surgeons will have plenty of work to do. I mean, there's still people gonna yeah, have problems, yeah. but what it, what it will do is patients where, you know, they had minor problems that they really don't wanna operate because it's, you know, like it's too early, it, you know, the disease isn't bad enough. You know, now they don't have to do those kind of cases. So now we can use this to bridge the patient. If they progress, then the spine surgeons, you know, have those cases. So it's really, again, just a great tool, you know, for everyone in medicine. And, you know, I, I truly believe all doctors want everybody to feel good, okay. so, so, and not with narcotics, but uh, they, they want them to feel better and have the best possible outcome. So whether it's this or whether they need surgery, you know, basically so, it's, it's, okay. uh, it's, it's the best option for so everyone. So as a quick recap, so for people that have back pain and they get relief by bending forward or sitting down, that this would be great for This them. is a perfect kind of thing for them, absolutely. Without medications? Absolutely. Okay, good. Dr. Reinhardt, great. always a pleasure to have you on the show. We always run out of time, so thanks again. Thanks for having me. You've been watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez for now. I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour. The leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.